Welcome back. Hi. How are you? Woo. Wonderful. Is that, loaded, is that a loaded question? <laughs> right? That's why I said, <sighs> This is Trisha. And I am Evangelist Laurie Ann, and we are just kicking, kicking it with Jesus. Jesus. Oh, man. Welcome back to part two of the seven I am statements mm-hmm. that Jesus said. Powerful. Start. Like I said, my favorite is the shepherd. Which we talked about last week. Yeah, we ended it with that. So last week we talked about I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. And those were very powerful. Mm Mm-hmm. All of them. So we'll jump right into it because we got three more to talk about. And this one is I am the resurrection and the life. All of these, you know, by the way, is they were all in the book of John in the New Testament. Every single one. Um, We're going right in order. I believe it starts at John 6. Um, I believe. Yep, Yep, John 6. John 6. Starting in verse 25 of John 6. And then it goes through. And right now we're in John 11. Yep. So in John 11, starting in verse 17, it says, When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yet even now I know whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who was to come and into the world. And that's where it ends there, but I mean... Can I just, would you mind if I just read it? Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on me as Savior will will live even if he dies. And I can remember somebody saying to me, what does that mean? It's so contradicting. And because we're three-part beings, you know, you can't have a car without an engine. Right. You know, you need an engine in order for the car to move. And it's the same thing within. If your spirit dies, your physical body dies. So that's what he's saying. Everything is about your heart. Your heart is your spirit. It, it You are. Right. And Jesus just wants that. And if you believe in him, if you confess him, if you trust in him and you rely on him for all things, you will live. You will live. Even though your physical body dies, you're going to live forever. I wrote a few things down with mm-hmm. this as well. It, I, he put, I wrote, Jesus does not merely say that he will bring about the resurrection or that he will be the cause of the resurrection, but he said that I am the resurrection and the life. I find that to be powerful, right? So yes. I, I, I took this from a Bible study that I was doing, that I have to do, and I was reading through it. And because this is talking about, so if you don't know this story, right? Mary and Martha called to Jesus to come because their brother Lazarus was dying. Jesus comes, and then his he's dead, right? His best friend's dead. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. So I just find that to be interesting. Like Jesus doesn't merely say he will bring about the resurrection. Like he's not going to bring the resurrection or that the resurrection will be a cause, will be, he'll be the cause of the resurrection. He says that he is the resurrection. So how beautiful that is. Like as long as we're in him, we have life. As long as we say that we want to be his best friend, like I tell my daughter, my three-year-old. Yeah. We have life in him. 
you know, <clears throat> can I have one trial for one second? Just because death has 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 hit this family um, recently, and I can't help but think. And you can't help it now that you're saved. Like when you know that you know that you know that if if you have Jesus, I my physical body dies. I am I am with him, and I'm staying there. And I know that not because of anything I did, right. but because he lives in me. Right. <clears throat> and I trust in, and I rely on, and I believe him. Right. As savior. But I wonder. As, you know, death came, I can't help but think, did this person have Jesus or are they in torment? Mm. And then I thought, I really, and it's my opinion, Trisha, I really feel like if you're in torment, the enemy comes, the demons come, and they remind you of the times where you could have yeah. received Jesus as Savior. Jesus was tugging on your heart. He was touching you. And you were like, Psh, that's so stupid. Like, right. that, how can you even, do you know? And that's, you know, bunny trail, but it they're is, both real. It is real. And I, I mean, like... This is, doesn't have anything to do with what you just said, but it just reminded me of what my husband said last night. We were talking and we were talking about a bunch of things, but one of the things he said, he's like, I was an atheist when you met me. Like, that's the first time he ever admitted that he was an atheist. Mm. And he said, but I can't deny, like, what I felt. You know what I mean? For years, Jesus yeah. had been knocking on his heart and he refused and just, that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't line up with what I can see in front of me. Right. But then it was just one day, he just went to church, wasn't asked, nobody asked him to, he just went and broke down mm. because there's a spirit that is so powerful, oh, much more powerful than the spirit of darkness. And sometimes, I don't know, and I don't know all the answers. I don't know, and sometimes I can say it frustrates me. You know? Yep. Why does it take so long to God, for God to do that? You know? when he We when he think could, it's long. Right. I he know. don't. Well, it, it is to me. <laughs> you came down to my time, so you know. Come on, <laughs> so, come on. But it is, like, we just have to put, like, I don't know all the answers. I find it that sometimes some of this scripture is kind of offensive, right? It is. But. For sure. I didn't make the world. Like, somebody had said, I saw a, not to Bunny Trail again, but I saw a TikTok about somebody saying, I forget his name, but he's a guy that goes to college campuses. I forget his name. And he debates people on the Bible. Mm. You know who I'm talking about? He's an old gentleman. Yep. He's really knowledgeable. The old white guy. Yeah, he's a really knowledgeable yeah. guy. So he was talking about somebody said, if if God made everything, then who made God? Mm. Right? And he broke it down. He's like, Well, science has proven that the earth had a beginning. If there's a beginning, there has to be an end. God doesn't have a beginning. He's eternal. He's always been. So there is there is nobody. That, that question is like null and void because it doesn't matter. Right. Because earth, we know, had a beginning. Re regardless if you want to believe it's the Big Bang or whatever. There was a beginning, mm. so there has to be an end. God is eternal. He's outside of it all. So right. there, he doesn't need an end. Because he's always been. He's always there. He's always will be. There's never going to not be a God that's there. Mm. Isn't that crazy? So. There's so much truth in it though. Yeah. That's so powerful. Wow. So. I just had two more. Three more things that I wrote down for that one though. Back to. Back to the normal schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus has the power lodged into his own hands. 
Into his own mm. hands he has the power. Jesus said to Lazarus, Jesus said to Lazarus to come out, and a dead man walked out. No. Let me just, no. No. He didn't walk out of nothing. He hopped. Well, yeah. And I'm going to tell all, you why. He was all wrapped up in mummy stuff. That's what it was. So when, you know, when we come to Jesus, just like Lazarus. We're wrapped up in bondage. Grave clothes. Just like... Because we've made a mess of our lives. Mm. The way we think, the way we act, the things we do. Right. Just like Lazarus. Right. And there's a lot of times that we need to hop to an altar and cry out to a God that... Right. Yeah, he hopped, man. He was he was looking like a mummy. Imagine that, though. I can't wait to see that in The Chosen. I'm just saying. I know. I just Bunny trail, that. sorry. <laughs> I just rewatched that thing, the trailer, and I was like, oh man, I cannot wait to go see this. Yeah. Drives yeah. me crazy that it's like the whole month of February. Yep. You know what I mean? Also, this is the last one that I wrote. This was not a future event, it was a present reality. Which is the truth, come on. So, like, you know what I mean? Yes. I mean, if you stop and really think about that, that's deep too. It is. You know, you can't. I don't know. Let me leave that alone because I'll just keep going. I mean, we can bunny trail. Uh, <laughs> we no. can make a part no. three. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So we'll go on to the next one. I just. Can we just say that one thing, though? Back to that, though. This was not a future event. It was a present reality because he was telling her. He told her right there that your brother will rise again. And she was like, yeah, 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 at the resurrection, like, I know. Like, no, it's a reality right now. Like, if we are in Jesus, it's a reality right now. That Do you think a part of her knew? Because as she's talking, do you think a part of her knew that if you just say it right now, he'll get up? Do you think that? Because in my heart, Hold on, wait. This was Martha, right? Right. This is Mary. Mary's the one that stayed home. So this is the same one that was running around. Right. So like we talked about when we were, we were talking, like she didn't really, she may not have even really known Jesus was who he was because that was I her think, friend. I think she did, but I don't think she understood because you have a lot of people that are surface Christians. Right. You know what I mean? But then you've got the people that, I mean, they dive into Jesus. And I'm not talking about the book. I'm talking about just allowing him to saturate you. Right. To the point where your whole countenance changes. Do you know what I mean? Right. I think that was Mary. But I think that Martha knew she just wasn't deep. Do you know I don't know if she would have known that. Because listen to what she says. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give to you. So is she saying without saying, if you ask God to raise him right now, he'll get up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And <clears throat> Jesus told her, your brother will rise from the dead. So I think he's telling her. This is what's going to happen. And Martha replied, I know he will rise from the dead in the resurrection on the last day. So in my heart, this is just my belief. I think she, when she says, I know that he's going to rise, she's saying without saying, I know that. Yeah, but what I'm asking is, can you ask the father right now? Right. Do you know what I mean? But that's my opinion. Maybe. I mean, never know until we get to heaven and ask her. You know, one day I'd love, the one person that I'd love to have come on here and just, let's just talk about the Bible in in, in the whole, is Uncle Jerry. Oh, I'd no. love to have him come on and just, let's just talk about the Bible. I bet he would. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Uncle Jerry, you're next. <laughs> 
All right, so moving on from the resurrection, even though that's such a beautiful... <sighs> Thank you, Jesus, that you are the resurrection and the life. John 14. It says, starting in verse 1, your heart must, uh, verse 1 to 14, your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If not, I would have told you. I am going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. You know, you know the way where I am going. Lord, Thomas said, of course it's Thomas, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to, to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and, and have seen him. Lord said, Philip, show us the Father and that's, not, and that's enough for us. Jesus said to him, I have been among you all this time without you knowing me. Without your knowing me, Philip. The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak my own. The Father who lives in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. This goes all the way to 14. I assure you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And he will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. That's it. Oh no, I think that's deep too. Jesus is not one version of the truth. He is the truth. Jesus is not a version of living. He is, li he is life itself. Jesus doesn't simply teach the way or point to, to it. He is the way. So like they wanted to see God so much, but he's saying, I, I am God. You're seeing me because you, you know God because you're seeing me. To the natural mind, think about what you're saying. I would be just like them. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, what are you talking about? Wait, what? And you can't even say, oh, it's like your dad and her son. Nah. It's not the same. No. No. And me and Josh were just having this conversation the other day. He's like, but they're, they're the same, but they're three different, they're three different people. And I'm like, but they're the same. He's like, yeah, but they're three different people. I'm like, but they're the same. <laughs> Look, though this, and my opinion, I mean, you can try, but my opinion, that right there, that is one of those things where you're going to have to walk that thing out in faith. You don't understand it. It's okay. Throw it over your shoulder and just keep going. Right. You believe it because he said it. Right. That's all. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it either in a sense where how are you all the same? But I, there's three different people. I remember when I Like, when I'm going to see God, faith. Jesus, and the Holy Spirit when I get to heaven. Because And says, then they're all going to go... You think so? Yeah. Yeah. And just be one? But what about Jesus always was? You don't think that Jesus was well, maybe, in the beginning? No, maybe maybe they all will be there because they were in the beginning. Because he says... Genesis that, does say... Um, us. Yes. So, uh, yeah, maybe. You know, I, may, I remember early on when I, when I first got saved, Pastor Raja did this thing where... He had steam, he had water, and he had ice. And he said, that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's all the same. 
was different. But they they all work differently. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. That's a... You know, yeah. it was a good analogy. Right. But, I mean... I don't understand it, how they're all the same, because they're not us. Right? So we can't under in our brain, we can't understand that because there's not, like, maybe, and this is far-fetched, but maybe, like, a twin could understand it a little bit better. Like, a fraternal twin. No, identical twin. That they literally were the same egg. Have you ever seen, like, how fraternal twins and no. identical twins are? Okay, so uh, fraternal twins is two eggs with two sperms. That's how you get a fraternal twin. Uh, an identical twin is one egg and one sperm split in half. That's cool, man. Isn't that crazy? That's cool. So it's the same person split in half. It's like, oh, here we are. It's like, boop, now there's two. Right? Hmm. So that's the way, the only way I can think about it is like, it's the, but they're not the same person. But even that, that's, that's a powerful that's like that's like God showing you how things operate in heaven. I don't understand it, but I believe it. Like I know because the Bible says that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be God and Jesus. The Holy Spirit's up there, probably walking around chilling. No, right? Holy Spirit. Yeah. No, I know. But I'm saying when we get there. Oh, like when, when we get rap there. when rapture happens and it's done, like it's all done. You know what I mean? I don't. I, that's how I picture it. Like we're all up there, God, Jesus. Like they're it's separate. So Josh says the same thing. He's like, well, they're separate beings. I'm like, yes, but they're the same. Mm. But they're they're separate beings, but they're the same. You just keep saying that. Because it just. <laughs> I don't know if you got to understand it. You know what I mean? Because I don't understand no, it. No, it, it's like I said. I, it's one of those things where by faith you just believe it and you just keep going because. Your mind really can't wrap around something like that. You can't make sense of that even if you try. Right. And you just, you believe it. There's God the Father, the Almighty. Right. There's Jesus Christ the Son, the one that took our place. And then you've got the Holy Spirit that is that comes and he dwells in us and he guides us into in in this life that we're living mm. you know what i mean you just said that not to bunny trail oh my gosh <laughs> tonight's you just said how jesus christ took our place and i was just reading in numbers that's crazy because like i that's just weird so the Le levites mm -hmm. how god says you're gonna consecrate them and whatever because they've taken the place of the firstborn of the womb that's crazy that's like levites did that like he had them do that and now jesus did that yeah you know I there think... always had to be a sacrifice so god took the levites because he took the firstborn of every egypt so he was taking the firstborn of every Israelite. The firstborn was supposed to be his. But instead, he, he took the Levites in place of the firstborn of the womb. Yeah. Yeah, let me not touch it. Just You don't want to keep buddy trying? I don't want to. Because <laughs> I really, I do, but I don't. There's this story in the Bible with Abraham. And Trisha, there's this promise that God has promised him. And so in the Old Testament, in that time, you take a turtle dove, you take a, a sheep, you take a lamb, you sacrifice them, and you put it on the altar. Mm -hmm. So God tells Abraham, okay, you know, I'm promising you this stuff and I'm just paraphrasing it my own way. And so they would take it, they would cut it down the middle, they'd make halves and they'd put on each table, on each altar. And then the people would walk in between right. and if you don't, if you don't keep your end of the bargain, if you don't keep your promise, what is done to these animals be done to you. Right. That's basically what 
And Trisha, there's this beautiful story in Genesis mm -hmm. where God tells Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation and your descendants are going to be, look up, he said, like the stars in the sky, try and count them, the sand on the seashore. And Abraham's like, but God, I don't have an heir. I don't have children. Mm. And so God says to him, go cut the animals and place them. And they were going to walk in between. And so all of a sudden, Abraham's sitting under a tree. And God puts him to sleep, but just enough where his eyes are still kind of open. And he sees a flaming torch walk in between the altars. And it was just God walking in between the altars. And Abraham had nothing to do with the promise. The promise was only God. Right. The one that made it, I'm the one that's going to fulfill it. Fast forward. Look at us all. I know. Look at us all. Talk about stars in the sky. I'd have to go back and find it somewhere, but I just, like maybe a month ago or something, was listening to somebody who was saying something about how they are now showing that, you know, how like we do the DNA testing yep. and all that stuff, that it's going all the way back to like Abraham. It's all going all the way back to even further than that. There was this guy that said... He has the blood of Jesus. And uh, something miraculous happened or whatever. And I'm like, how in the world did you get the blood of Jesus? Stop they don't it even right have now. Jesus' blood. Thank you. <laughs> like, stop He's it right here. now. Like, I just can't. I was talking to my cousin, before we move on, but I was talking to my cousin about this yesterday when she was over at my house, about how people that don't believe in Jesus. And I'm like, the thing is, though, at the end of the day, is like, where's Jesus then? If he ain't real, where is he? Where's his body? We're in 2024. Somebody, somewhere, would have found his bones by now. And been like, oh, here he is. You can't. No one has. Because he's not here. Because he rose again. And he ascended into heaven. I think even more than that, Trisha, I would even challenge people, and, you know, I hate to say it like this, but I would even challenge people, put God to the test mm. because he doesn't mind that. Right. Put him to the test and and see. Like if you're sincere about it. Right. Right. See if what we're saying is not the truth. And he I don't think that he he minds that people question because when you Absolutely do not. really question with an open heart, mm -hmm. not just to question be like, see, I'm right. You don't go to him to be like, with the with the thought of like, I know that you're going to show me that I'm right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I've watched so many testimonies of people that just, witchcraft, just had, a, they've had enough now. And they went out into like the, their backyard and just cried up to whoever it is in the sky, just show me who you are. And God showed up so powerfully. Someone even said like, an, who was sitting right there. Like, came into her time and had a conversation with her. Was it Jesus? I don't know. Was it an angel? I don't know. But he showed up, and now she's, like, a follower of Jesus. But she she just wanted, she want, if you're really real. Show me. So I don't think that he cares that people. I, I think don't. he wants to prove himself. He does. I think he wants to show you. I think he wants to love his people. Because he loves us so much. I think he wants to love us. And, you know, people will make fun of. They'll bash you. They'll... I believe it's because it's touching something inside of you and you'd rather not. You'd rather believe your lie. Right. Because it makes you feel better. It justifies your behavior. Right. You know, That's instead of yielding to... A truth that you can't see you know 
Because that's hard. <laughs> who are you telling? Right. I'm just you know? saying. Like, who are you it telling? Is, it's so Absolutely. hard. Absolutely. It. It's not like we're just sitting here being holier than thou, but it is hard. Even still. I think one of the hottest things, and I find it to be so prevalent, is, and I'm not, I'm going to get a lot of slack for this, but there's a lot of saved people. You've been saved for a long time, and now all of a sudden, you forgot where God found you, mm. and you stop judging people and how they're living. Right. That ain't our job. No. Our job is just to love people right where they are. And when they ask you, tell them the truth. Right. Tell our testimony. Because you know what? Honestly, there's a whole lot of people that they're saved and they still, they're living in I think that that, but also telling your testimonies, like talking about what God has done for you. Like, I, I'm just saying because, so my youngest daughter, she had, she had dragged her leg her whole life, her whole seven, 16 and a half months of her life. She always had something wrong with her left leg. Mm. Even when she was nine months old up until 13 months old when we did occupational therapy. We always worked on the left leg because there was something wrong with that leg. Right. That leg didn't. We had to do brushing on her leg. She always, actually always told me, focus on her left leg. Focus massaging her left leg. Focus with the vibration on her left leg. Try to get the muscles going in her left leg. Right. There was something wrong with her left leg. So fast forward at her 15-month appointment, I go and I bring her and I say, Is, could there be something wrong with her sacral dimple in her back? So ended up, we ended up having to get an x-ray. We get the x-ray. The x-ray says that she possibly could have mild hip dysplasia. So that was on a Thursday. On a Saturday, November 12th, me, my husband, my two daughters went down to the altar. We prayed over her. And I specifically stood there with her in my arms. Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Okay. We found out on the 9th of November, which was a Thursday mm -hmm. night, who actually interrupted our podcast because I had to. That's all right. So we, it was a November 9th mm. and then the 12th was a Sunday. Right, I remember. And we went to the altar and I specifically, I held her and the guy that prayed, I'm telling you, Josh left that altar crying his eyes out. Like he didn't, he's like, I don't know what just happened, but I felt something so powerful. I mean, he had so much power coming out of that altar, that guy that prayed with us. But I sat there and I just prayed and I specifically said, Jesus, put muscle in her legs, mm. help her walk. And when she walks, to walk straight Come without dragging her leg amen right mm. and i said and the other thing the other prayer i said it was when they go when we go to the orthopedic surgeon that x-ray shows nothing wrong everything is perfectly fine she has movement everything in her body she started walking november 13th the next the day. The next day. Come on, Jesus. She started walking. And not only did she start walking, yeah. she was not dragging her leg. Come on, Jesus. So we went to her doctor's appointment in January. So that was in November. We finally went to our appointment in January, which was just this week. And he said, her x-rays are absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong on either side of her hips. He showed me the ball joints in her yeah. hips. Nothing wrong. Her movement is fluid her walking is perfect and he's like i'll see you in eight months but you know she i, I pretty much i'm not gonna ever have to see you again because there's nothing wrong with her the next day after that so that that was monday tuesday my doctor who was the one that said her legs are uneven her her under her legs had flaps one was and i looked at it one was larger than the other so her legs were uneven. Wow. Her hips were uneven. She's like, nothing's wrong with this child's legs. So you can't tell me Mom. <laughs> that Jesus Come ain't on. real and that the that there's just some random reason why 
all of this stuff happen. I believe that we're supposed to tell people our testimony because mm. when I've told people, I've told so many people that testimony of Parker, non-believers, their face drops. It just unbel- like they they know her, they seen Parker, they seen the way she walked, they seen the way she crawled, they seen her mm. and now they see her now and they're hearing the story of one day she was this way. We we prayed for her on Sunday. Monday she was walking. So they can't not believe it. They can't understand it. Come on. But they can't believe. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. I believe that we're supposed to we're supposed to love people, but we're supposed to tell stories. Absolutely. We're supposed to tell people how powerful he still is and right. how he's still reigning on this earth That's and he's it. still healing. He's still healing people. Because the Bible says, ask. Right. He just said it. Right. Ask. John 10. Anyway, that's my spiel. (laughs) So, as we bunny trailed this whole entire thing. We got one more. We got one more. John 15, verses 1 through 8. Oh, one of my favorites, too. (laughs) I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produce much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch, and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Can I just say, I didn't even realize that we were going to just say that Mm. after the story I just said. Right, (laughs) right. Ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. When was this book written? And chapter 10 said the same thing. I know, but I just like, sorry. I just didn't realize that that story just <laughs> like, woo! <laughs> for real. Uh. And do not doubt my love for you. A few things I wrote down from that Bible study is, if Jesus is the true vine... Then the implication is that there is there are false vines that we can or may be connected to and continuing. Mm. Jesus encourages us to live and remain and make your home in him. Symbolism of the vine and branches is similar to the head and the body. We are a living relationship with Jesus and belong to him. We are unable to live on substitutes. Hmm. Absolutely not. You can't. Right. There's no substance. Just think about like, just, I just, I don't know why I thought about this, but just think about substitutes. Okay. We go to the market Hmm. and if you don't buy organic, but you buy a substitute from organic because it has all produce, has, it's fake. What is it doing to your body? Exactly. It's killing your body. I was just telling Josh, like, we're do- I'm doing the Daniel fast or whatever the fast is that we're doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will continue to call it the Daniel fast 2.0. And I just said to him, like, I feel cleaner. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like I'm not putting crap into my body. It's all good whole foods and my body feels good yep that's funny because second service i called for a fast and mine was no meats no sweets and no bread and so you know i'm not a big I'm not big on vegetables and I'm definitely not big on fruit. But, and it, we're not doing this for weight loss. Right. But I did lose weight in a week. I know, me too. And the crazy thing is, 
those three things, just cutting those out of my life, I said to my man, I said, I, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to eat meat anymore. Mm. And I really don't think that I'm going to eat bread in the sense of just eating bread. Right. Maybe occasionally. Right. But. But like pasta. That's what I'm talking stuff, about. Yeah. Like, I, listen, and, and trying to train your mind. And I'm just talking about me. All right, I'm full. Right. Stop eating. Right. Wait a minute, I'm hungry. And I realized this morning, I went out to breakfast with my mom. And I got granola with yogurt and fruit. And I got scrambled eggs. I ate the scrambled eggs and I was full. Mm. I'm like, how is that possible? I ate two scrambled eggs and I was full. Yeah. Normally I have breakfast, right. home fries, bacon, yeah. toast. So you know what I mean? <laughs> like, what's up? And so I had to take the yogurt home, but I'm thinking, huh, that just goes to show what our stomachs really are inside. Right. They're like, right. What are we doing? What are we doing? But that even going back to, you can't live on substitute. So that's why I said, how it. long like, how can you, are you going to live with your astrology? Hmm. How long are you going to live with your sage? Sage. Sage. Crystals. At the end of the day... I know you think that you're doing... No. I'm sorry. No. Some people really think that... They there's... still know they, they're empty. I'm sorry. That's a substitute. And listen, if people really think that they're talking to dead people... You're sadly mistaken. Right. You're not talking to your dead mother. You're not talking to your dead. You're not talking to the dead. You can't. Right. Right. You're talking to a demon. Right. You got to remember, these demons are ancient. Ancient. Especially, like, if you believe in astrology and all these things, and you believe in this ancient world, right? There's ancient demons that know you. Don't get me started. <laughs> They do. They know you and they know your past. They know everything about you. They're, that's their job. Is to Just like when you get saved and you, ha you have a, a, an assigned angel that helps you. Hmm. I don't know if that's true or not. But the moment you came out of the womb, there was a demon assigned to you. Right. The generational demons that have been in your family for a long time. Oh, that demon of lying? Yep. The demon of adultery? Yep. You know what I mean? Even They're the demon just of just anxiety? Depression? All the time. Depression? That demon is just going ramp. Right. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, the demon of, demon of depression and suicide are holding hands. I've well, never seen, seen so many young people and the demons are taking them out left and right. It's terrible, Trisha. It terrible. 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 Loneliness. I just, nah. And I, I just feel like we ain't supposed to be inside the church as much as we are. We're supposed to be out. Mm. Show people him. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Not in a judgmental way either. No. Especially with people that don't, that do believe in all of that other stuff. And you know what? Listen, this is my opinion. You're probably going to be mad when I say it, but I don't even do it anymore. I won't even talk to you about it anymore. But I ain't shutting up either. Because as much as you talk to me about all the things that you do, mm. I'm going to talk to you just as much as 
you do. Right. About my Jesus. Right. Because I know that what I have is true. So let's let's be the thing is is like we can't force anybody to believe. No, not at all. But we should always talk about Jesus. We should always talk about what we believe is to be true. I'm not gonna see. I will talk to you and I will tell you what I believe. I'll tell you my stories. But if you don't want to believe me, or you don't want to believe, or you want to believe in a sense where like, oh well, that's just another God that's helping you. Because I got that the other day too. Yeah. Then that's on you. You are a big boy or girl. You can make your own choices. I'm telling you, there's a Jesus of the Bible, a God of the Bible, and his name is Jesus. I just did that the other day. So last Sun was it last Sunday? So I got very passionate about, you know how I get, like I got passionate about what I was saying. I was like, yo, there was a man that died 2,000 years ago for me and he lived right. <laughs> and so I, I took that, I made it a short, right? And I threw it up. And this, I think she, she was a young girl. She was a lot younger than me. She goes, man, why is she yelling at me? <laughs> I swear, I didn't ever say that. And I said, I said, I'm just passionate. Yeah. I'm just passionate. Some people call it yelling. I call it passion. You know, Akuna But, Kuna. you know, I think my mom is loud and my mother's French. My aunts on my father's side are loud. So, like... Psh. French? You're Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican and French. Okay. Well, you're Puerto Rican, so you're loud. <laughs> Say yeah, so <laughs> they're, 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 they're loud. Oh, that's so funny. Me, you get me and my cousin Madeline in the same room, y'all. Put wow. earmuffs on. I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. That's so funny. So. I mean, I'm a very loud person too, but. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah. Anyway, there is there is no substitutes. Can't live on it. No, it will not sustain. Oh, and I was gonna say too when you were saying about the demons, real quick about that. Because sometimes I think, like, well, how many demons are there? But it says that, like, one third. Come on. And do, do you, do you really know, know how many there was? We don't even know how many angels there were. So one third of how many? <laughs> A lot, probably. A lot. You know, you've got, from what I gather, three archangels. You've got Michael. You got Gabriel and you got Lucifer. God never took because gifts come without repentance. God, from what I understand, never took Lucifer's powers. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> I don't know if he took most of his powers either. I don't think he did because look at the no. music industry. Well, he rules here, the Bible right. says. Right. So, and if you haven't noticed, I mean, it just, and I don't mean to say it the way I'm going to say it, but the world is going to hell in a handbasket and we're just I mean, letting just it. Look at the thing. Oh, whatever. And look at the stuff that they are allowing. I just can't even, like, I'm like, that's really a song. Like, did we really just do that as a performance? Don't get me started. We got rid of cable. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had cable. <laughs> I just can't. TikTok's my, uh, my news, so... The things I that I can't. see that is out there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, thank God I'm going to homeschool my kids. I just can't. And I remember my sister-in-law, Holly, she threw up a, a, a thing a couple years ago. They had this big thing about a particular book in the library of the schools in Rhode Island. And what in the hell is that? a porn book right. in the kids section of, of the library. Right. Oh no, ma'am. That's all over the U.S. though because Yo. I was watching something on TikTok on my news station TikTok <laughs> and it was a pastor at the school board and he was reading the book. He's like, oh, is this making you uncomfortable? 
Because this it is made in, me uncomfortable. This is in the elementary school. Can I, I'm gonna keep going, and he's reading it. Like I'm like, this is insane. Talking like, about bad stuff. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Putting th- th- things in sexual. I mean, straight bad. up. Straight up. Like I'm like, what are we? This is not being inclusive. I'm sorry. That that book's not inclusive. What's inclusive about that? Because you try and read to my five-year-old, eight-year-old. Like, oh, well, it's not made to- for them. Okay, but it's in the library where they can go. No. Another one had, there was pictures. It was pictures in the book. And the mom was, <laughs> mom was like, do you want me to show you? I- oh, that makes you uncomfortable? Don't you think it'll make a 10-year-old uncomfortable too? See, and I think, Trisha, at the end of the day, look. Is my opinion, and I said it the other day. Even pastors are starting to, you know, because I really believe where we are in the world. TikTok, Jesus is separating mm. the goats from the sheep. Those that really, really, and even those that they really are saved, but lost their way for a minute. Mm. And now that they got caught, the conviction, the shame, the guilt will turn the person's heart to repentance in Jesus' name. And you get back on the side Mm. where you belong. Right. Because we're not promised tomorrow. Man, The death that we just experienced, 64. Yo, what? Like out of nowhere. It's crazy. Heart attack. Boom. That's not okay. You still got a wife. You still got a daughter. You know what I mean? Daughter's not not old. Daughter's not old. Right. She's still young. 64 is young. Wow. As we wrap up, let's do it. Um, you know we're in a we're in a time where things are very. I, I, Jesus said it the other day, last week. It's a critical hour. Mm-hmm. You like threw me through a spin last week, but there are so many people. Marriages are are breaking apart. And the one thing that I can say, Trisha, is the lady that just lost her husband, she said to me, and I quote, just stop being angry and not speaking to your spouse. That's so stupid. In in the tunnel of you're dead now and I can't I can't say I'm sorry, I can't say right. that I love you. Right. Like Yeah. And so you know, children going astray, children, you know, wrestling with depression and mothers don't know what to do with their kids. And and I'm not saying that you come to Jesus and Jesus is going to wave his magic wand and say, oh, everything's good now. Right. It doesn't work like that. But if you just, if you, if you keep pressing in, I say to all my people in the fast, fasting and prayer, they go hand in hand, peanut butter and jelly, like pray. And some of them said to me today, I'm feeling shameful. I'm feeling unworthy. Pray, get that worship music on and pray. Mm. Kick the devil in his teeth because those are the arrows that the enemy's throwing. Right. You're worthy. You're loved. You have purpose. Rewrite that story. And in Jesus' name, we speak that over everybody Mm. on the other side of the computer. Mm. You are worthy. You are loved. You have purpose. God is writing. He longs to write a new story in your Mm. life if you're not with him. Right. 
And it's just a simple, yes, Jesus, come into my life. I know that you're real. That's it. Right. Come into me. Live there. And, you know, I think people are just so fearful of the unknown. But he longs for us. Right. Right? So let's pray for the people. Precious Holy Spirit, how we love you and how we thank you that even in our lives, Father, we, we long for you. We long for the things that when the enemy comes in and he shoots his arrows and we feel unworthy and we feel unloved, we know where to go. But Lord, I ask that for all the people that are listening to us, all the people that are watching us in Jesus' name, I pray, Father, that you would meet them right where they are. I pray, Jesus, that you would uncover and unveil their eyes. Let them see truth. Let them see you, Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would wrap yourself with love around them. I pray, Father, for those that are just so teary-eyed and they can't see through their tears. Lord, I ask that you would wipe their tears. I pray, Jesus, for those that are contemplating leaving, I pray that you would breathe upon them, breathe upon their soul. Show them, Jesus, that they are worthy. Show them that they are loved. I pray that even um, for those people, I pray in Jesus' name that they would reach out on Facebook, on Instagram, Jesus, on YouTube. Let them reach out. And I pray, Father, that we would come together as your daughters right here, right now, and we would pray for those women, pray for those men. I pray, Jesus, that you would have your way in this time and in this season and in this hour. Raise up your people, Father, raise them up. Fill them with fire, fill them with power, and fill them with passion for you and for only you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Well. That was a good episode. We did a lot of bunny trails. Apologize on that. Yeah, <laughs> trying not to do that, but you know, hey. ADD kicks in and woo, I'm running. But running. until next time, we yeah. are kicking it with Jesus. God bless you guys.